What a privilege I have to welcome each and all to the morning worship service here at the Bremen Church of Christ. For those visiting with us, you are our honored guest. We're thankful for your presence today. We would invite you back at each and every opportunity you have to be with us. We'd ask members and visitors alike to please fill out an attendance card. Pass that to the center aisle. We'll collect that at the close of our service so that we may have a record of your visit with us today. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for Bible study, 10 o'clock for morning worship, 6 o'clock Sunday evening, 7 on Wednesdays for our midweek Bible study. For the John McDaniel, our song leader, selected number 85 is our first song, 85, if you wish to turn to that and be ready at the appropriate time or watch the screen above me. Many of you may have noticed that we have a new projector and we've had several many quality comments about the uh, picture quality, so we're thankful that we've been able to purchase this new equipment and we're also thankful for Brian for putting it up. Next Sunday evening, the elders will be presenting the budget and also our goals for this new year of 2012. That will be the evening worship service. So if you want to know what's going on with the congregation here, where we are, what we're doing, and where we're going, we would highly encourage you to be here next Sunday evening as the evening worship service will be our budget and goals presentation for 2012. Concerning those on our prayer list, we've had several that we've been mentioning for quite some time. You're asked to consult your bulletin in the screen for those. One addition, Brother Robert Edwards is not feeling well and is sick at home. Are there others that we should mention? Several activities, now that we've come to the first of the year, there are several activities I wish to bring to your attention. There will be a last to leaders and leaderettes planning meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock in the auditorium. If you are involved in that or want to be involved in that in any fashion, you're encouraged to be here this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Brother Johnny would like to meet with those that are participating in Last to Leaders, or even if you have a remote interest in it, encourage your participation this afternoon, 5 o'clock in the auditorium for that meeting, Lads to Leaders and Leaderettes. The ladies' devotional and lunch will be Thursday, January the 5th, 11 o'clock here at the building. Bring finger foods. Group 2, Robert and Cheryl's group, is also scheduled to meet Fellowship Hall next Sunday evening after the evening worship service as a sign-up sheet in the foyer. You've also seen advertised a PowerPoint seminar that we have upcoming Friday, January 20, from 6 to 9, and Saturday the 21st, all day from 8 to 5. This is aimed at those that are wanting to use PowerPoint in Bible studies and presentations, but if you have need for that in your professional life, I would highly encourage you to be planning to be a part of this seminar as well. Brother Guyton Montgomery, no stranger to us here, will conduct these classes. He is an expert in PowerPoint, and if you have interest in that, we would encourage you to be here. There is no fee for it. Just bring yourself and enjoy. We would ask you to bring your laptop if you wish to participate in that. If you are coming, let us know so that we can make those plans by next week. There's a supervisor's, teacher supervisor's meeting January the 22nd. That's two weeks, uh, three weeks from today, the 22nd supervisor's meeting at 5 o'clock. Group 3 will meet in the fellowship hall Sunday, January 22nd after the evening worship service sign-up list in the foyer. Also, the last Friday of this month, January the 27th, the area-wide singings will resume and they will be hosted the first one of the year here at Bremen. So we're looking forward to that and it will be here before we know it. January the 27th, area-wide singing here at the Bremen Congregation. Also, Saturday, January the 14th, which will be upon us a week from this coming Saturday, the wedding of Caitlin Adams and Brandon Baggett will be here at this building at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock Saturday, January the 14th. <clears throat> On behalf of the eldership, I wish to read you a letter that the eldership specifically received from Brother James Rogers. Brother Rogers was a preacher here for several years, for those who do not know him. The letter was dated December the 23rd, and it states, Bad decisions were made while I was in Bremen that caused hurt. I am sorry for my part in any of them. Would you bow with me, please? Kind and gracious Father, we're thankful for the many blessings of life that you shower upon us. We're thankful that we were able to rise this morning, that we're able to enjoy the measure of health that we have at this time that allowed us to be here with those of like precious faith in this fine facility. 
Father, we're thankful for the time that you've given us this morning to meet with those of like precious faith, to study another portion of thy word and worship thee, we pray in spirit and in truth. Father, may we have come for no other effort and no other purpose than to edify one another and worship thee acceptably this day. Forgive us of anything amiss in our lives so that we may stand pure and clean in thy sight and do just that. Father, be with us as we strive to do what's right and strengthen one another and take as many people with us to heaven as we possibly can. Be a good example to those round about us. Forgive us when we fail in these matters. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue our worship now and stand and sing number 85. <laughs> I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from the sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. He wills that I should wholly be in word and thought indeed. Then I, his holy face, may see who went from this earth life freed. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I Stands a place prepared for me, a home, a house not made with hands, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives, I know, I know eternal life. Supper this morning, number eighty, number eight zero. <clears throat> Verses one, two, four, and five. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Oh, marvelous, how oh, wonderful, and my song shall ever be. my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grace, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall Sins and my soul 
him his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall Something glory, his face I blast shall see. Twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall end. Pray with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your Son who came to die upon the cross for our sins. We thank you, God, that we have this opportunity now to take our minds back and remember his death and the pain and suffering that he suffered for us. We pray, God, that you will be with us as we partake of this bread. May we do so in a manner that's pleasing to you. First in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Was anyone overlooked in the serving of the bread? Need our thanks. <clears throat> Reverend and Father, we thank you for this opportunity again to sum around this table as we take of this fruit of the vine which represents a shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on that cross. May we partake in a manner well pleased in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
dismiss anyone serving us for the vote. This concludes the Lord's Supper, but we're also commanded to give on the first day of the week as we as prophets. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all the many blessings that you have given us. We pray, God, that you will help us to always remember that everything we have comes from you. We pray, God, that you will be with us now as we give back a portion of that that belongs to you. We pray that you will be with those who are over the spending of this money, that uh, they may do so in a manner that's pleasing to you. Uh, Be with us now as we give back. May we do so with a cheerful heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sixty-three. Sixty-three. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O earth, with heavenly comforts fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, Still says God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own and he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers gloom, by waters still or trouble sea, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. His own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower would be for my All on earth is done when by thy grace the victory is won. In death's cold wave I will not flee, since God 
morning number 150 150 <clears throat> of the hour. We're thankful, Lord, for all the many physical blessings of life that you've bestowed upon us. Most of all, we're thankful for your son who came and died on the cruel cross for our sins. Pray, Lord, for your blessings on this congregation in the coming year. We pray that you'll bless the efforts of our elders, our deacons, our minister, our Bible school teachers, and others who are striving for it to grow spiritually and numerically. Pray, Lord, that you'll be with our elected leaders. We pray you'll give them the courage and wisdom to do that which is right in your sight. Pray, Lord, that you'll watch over those who serve in our military, our law enforcement agencies, our firefighters, and others that protect and serve the people of this land. Pray, Lord, you'll watch over those of our number who are sick, be with their families, be with the medical professionals tending to their needs. 
pray you'll comfort those who are bereaved. Pray, Lord, that you'll be with those who are teaching and preaching your word in foreign lands. Pray that you'll be with us as we go throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll sing number 21 this morning as the invitation song at the conclusion of Sydney's lesson, number 21, if you'd like to mark it. And before the lesson, number 215, 215. <clears throat> oh, Zion, lovely Zion. Let's all stand for the song before the lesson this morning. We'll sing all four verses and let's, let's all sing out together. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode. Oh, Zion, Zion, I look thy gates to see. Firm at the eternal throne, no wars, no desolations shall ever move a stone. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. No decay, no yesterday, no morrow, but one eternal day. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. Immortals, the praises of its King. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. Bibles to the beginning part of the book of Joshua. We're going to give some attention to some things that are said in that context as I study together this morning. We do appreciate so much the presence of each of you here today. We hope that thus far this year it's been a good year for you. Hasn't been a whole lot of it yet, but uh, hopefully we're off to a great start and hopefully we have made uh, resolution resolution of man that we're going to be faithful servants of God this year, that we're going to be more diligent than we have ever been before in our service to God, that we're going to participate better in everything in which we have opportunity to participate. We're going to support our elders like we've never supported them before. There are just a lot of good resolutions that we can make that will help each of us regardless of 
our spiritual strength at this point. There's always room for growth and development within us to be more faithful children of God. So hopefully being here today, the beginning of this year, that you'll make a resolution that, that you're going to be much more important in the kingdom of God than you've ever been before because of your service in that kingdom. Uh, several people have talked about uh, <clears throat> watching the ball drop. They heard somebody the other day talking about going to watch the possum drop. And the only thing I saw drop was my eyelids this morning. So <laughs> I didn't set up long enough to see all of that uh, going on. But I'm wide awake and hopefully you are as well. <clears throat> when you come to the close of the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, we find our, our God taking Moses who had been the leader of Israel, as a matter of fact, Moses and Aaron, went back down into Egypt and led that nation of Israel that had become a nation while in Egypt, had led them out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, and through about 40 years of wilderness wanderings. And now they have come to a point where they are about ready to go on into that promised land through the crossing of the Jordan to take and to subdue the land that God had promised to Abraham's descendants many, many years before. But you'll notice in that regard that Moses goes up into the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, top of that mountain. While he's in the top of that mountain, you'll notice that the Lord showed him all of the land. And there's a very detailed description of that land <clears throat> that is given in verses 2 and 3. All of Naphtali, land of Ephraim, Manasseh, all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, city of the palm trees unto Zoar. If you look on a map and, and get that description, you'll see that, that that basically covers what we know as the land of Palestine, the land of Canaan, that these people were about to go in and subdue and take in the land in which they would dwell. But you'll notice in verse 4 that the Lord says to him, Moses, I, I've showed you all of this land that I promised to the descendants of Abraham years ago, I've allowed your eyes to see the entirety of it. But I'm not going to let you go in. And we know why that is. Because Moses rebelled against God on one occasion. And God did not permit him to lead those people on into that land. <clears throat> you come into the book of Joshua, Moses has now died. Joshua is called upon to be the leader of that nation in the place of Moses. Joshua was about to go into a land that would be somewhat new to him. The surroundings would be new. The obstacles would be new. Opposition is going to be new. But there are going to be a lot of opportunities that Joshua will have to serve God and to show his God to a heathen land in which he was about to dwell. Well, as far as we're concerned today, we're not going into a new land. We're going to continue, I suppose most of us at least, to continue to dwell in this land in which we have been dwelling for ever how many years you and I have been dwelling here. So it's nothing new to us. By this time, surely for the most of us, our surroundings are not new. Hopefully we understand what the difficulties, the obstacles, the opposition is that we face every day as children of God. But when we look into Joshua chapter 1, there are some things that God says to Joshua that are going to be important in his life if he is going to be a promoter and an example of godliness in this promised land, they must be present. 
And as I read through chapter 1 and thinking about our lesson today, I thought, you know, nothing has, has really changed. When you look at the land into which Joshua was about to go, it was a land of idolatry. It was a land of paganism. On every hand, all of these pagan nations had the various gods that they were serving. They were not serving the God that you and I claim to serve today. The Philistines had their gods. The Amorites had their gods. Moabites had their gods. And, and you could list all of the ites that you want to list out of that land. And every nation had at least one God, if not more, that they served and they served diligently. So as Joshua was going to lead the, the people of God into that land, there was obviously going to be opposition. But they had a responsibility. <clears throat> when we look into the book of Isaiah, one of the things that, that Isaiah notes as a downfall of the nation of Israel was that God had, had raised them up and in essence had brought them into this promised land in the land of pagan people to serve as lights in a world of darkness. Now the only way they can do that is to serve God faithfully. And as you read through the book of Isaiah, the one thing that Isaiah says to them more than once is, you failed. You failed. To be the kind of light that God wanted you to be. They had a responsibility. And so do we today. While we are not going into a new land, we're still living in a land of paganism, a land of idolatry. Oh, I realize that, that as we drive down the streets and we go about the countryside, we do not see various altars and images of, of what we think of as, as gods, little g gods, idols. That men are serving. But when you look around and see what it is that controls the lives of people, you're seeing their God. You see, that's what idolatry really is. <clears throat> is allowing something else, someone else, other than God, to be the leader of our life. We have that responsibility to be a light to those people. In uh, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus in that Sermon on the Mount gave at least two illustrations of what we are to be as His people in this dark pagan world in which you and I live. He said, Ye are the salt of the earth. If the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. By that he has simply said to us, in just a nutshell form, you are that which will preserve godliness in a world of ungodliness. We are to have a preserving effect in this world in which you and I live. We cannot allow our lives to become of such nature that godliness departs from us. He further said, You're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Then he said, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify the Father which is in heaven. The light of the world. Well, that sounds exactly like what Isaiah said that God intended for the Israelites to be in the pagan world in which they lived and a responsibility in which they failed. You know, if we were going to make resolutions in our lives, and I know we make a big thing about resolutions this time of the year, but, but you know, this is not such an important time in the life of the child of God. Today is no more important as days come and go than yesterday. 
Yeah, this is the Lord's day, and in that I understand. But, but day to day in the life of the child of God, one day is the same as the other. That is, I have got to so live my life that I can show the people around me what it really means to live a God-like life. So if you're into resolutions, what resolution better could you make than say, I want to be a little brighter light than I was last year? I want to show the world in, in which I live. I want to show my friends and neighbors what a child of God really looks like. And by doing His will, we can be just that. No, that does not put us on the pedestal of perfection. That does not give us the right to brag and boast about who we are and what we are. But it does place upon us a very serious responsibility. So Joshua has now been chosen to lead these people in to be a light in a pagan world. We live in a pagan world. We have the responsibility to be that light. But if you think about the circumstances of Joshua's day, here is a newly formed nation, Israel, that's about to cross over the Jordan and into that promised land. And you might think, boy, what an awesome responsibility that is. How will they manage to do that? What's it going to take? Well, when you begin reading in Joshua chapter 1, God speaking here tells him to go over Jordan, you and the people, every place that you set the sole of your foot, that's, that's what I told Moses I'd, I'd give to you. And he gives the coastlines or boundaries, verse 4. But then I want you to notice what he says beginning in verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua was about to lead a physical nation into another land. There would be physical warfare. They had the responsibility to, to drive out those heathen nations, to, to subdue them. Well, we're not in a physical war with the heathen nation in which we live. But we are in a spiritual war. Friendship of the world is enmity with God. James chapter 4 and verse 4. Enmity there means at war with. We don't want to be at war with God. But as Paul would write to Timothy, endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> what does that suggest? Good soldier suggests an army. What does being a good soldier suggest? That you're in a war. So we have the responsibility to take upon us that spiritual warfare. Yes, our primary enemy is the devil. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But the devil has a tremendous influence in the lives of men and women today. I wish some way we could get fixed in our minds just how powerful Satan is. I'm afraid that too often we take him lightly. And maybe do not realize that, that when certain things happen in our own lives, that ought not to happen, that the devil has won that battle. That's what's happened. And so we're in a battle. And the devil can use us, if we're not careful, to war on his side. And so we must accept that battle in which we find ourselves as children of God. Not a physical warfare is described here, but a spiritual one. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Then Paul suggests in that context to, to put on the whole armor of God, and I'm not going to go into that armor today. It's a study within itself. But it simply says to us that, that we are in a war. We do have battles in our lives with, with the world in which we live. 
But there is preparation that we can make to be successful in that battle. Now God says to Joshua here, that there will not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. You think about that in a spiritual sense. Who is able to stand before the child of God as long as the child of God is wielding the sword of the Spirit? Man cannot prevail. But he says, the reason is, I'll be with you. I won't forsake you. I won't fail you. How much confidence today do we have in God to see us through the difficulties that, that we face in life and sometimes every day? In Matthew chapter 28, when Jesus, giving the Great Commission as Matthew records it, Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them, and lo, I am with you always. Verse 20, even to the end of the world with you always. God's promise to be with us. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and, and be content with such things as you have. For He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do to me. We can overcome in this world with God's help. So you see the promise that God made to Joshua in leading that physical nation into physical battle, which involves spiritual values as well, is no different in essence than the promise that God has made to us. He'll be with us. He'll not forsake us. He'll help us as we go through the battles of this life as a child of God. Notice what he says in verse 6. Be strong. Back up one minute to verse 5. One point I wanted to make before I got to that one. You notice in verse 5 he says that um, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses. As I was with Moses. You remember what Paul said in Romans 15, 4? Whatsoever things written aforetime written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture might have hope. Just, just flip back as you have time through the Old Testament and see how many men and women God was with in life that were able to overcome. I mean, you can start with Abel. You could, you could go to Abraham. You've got Moses, you've got David, you've got the judges. I mean, you know, the list is a long list of people. And as we go back and read and see how God was with them and hear Him say, I'll be with you. That's what He's doing to Joshua. As I was with Moses, Joshua knew how God had been with Moses. Through those wilderness, coming out of, out of Egypt, through that wilderness wandering, the provisions that were made day in and day out, Joshua had been witness to all of that. He knew how God had been with Moses. And to hear God say, I'll be with you just like I was with him, should give him the strength and the courage to do what he needs to do. And the same with us today. God has never failed any person. Now, there have been a lot of people who failed God, but God has never failed any person. So with that in the background, look at what he says in verse 6. Be strong. And we alluded to that a moment ago. The child of God is never considered a weakling. Never. Not a faithful child of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the armor of God. The armor is provided for us. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We have everything that we need to continue on in battle in this life. We don't have any reason to be afraid. Now, if we aren't equipped for the battle, there's reason to be concerned. But since God has provided everything that we need to succeed, 
we really have no reason to be fearful in this life. Paul, in writing to Timothy, said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. That's what God provides for us. As a child of God, we ought to be ashamed if we're ever heard to say, I'm afraid, if it involves doing the will of God. We ought to be ashamed. There's no reason to be afraid. Whether it's, you know, battling life on a daily basis, whether it's teaching someone the Word of God, whatever, whatever obstacle we may face in life, with God's help, there is no way we can fail. He's promised. He won't fail us. So maybe that's where we need to begin our prayer life this year. God, give me the courage that I've never had before to do what you want me to do in this life of wickedness, sinfulness on every hand, ridicule, whatever may come my way. God, give me the strength and the courage to do what I need to do. Do we not remember that our Lord said, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. Do we not remember that Paul wrote in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Let your request be made known unto God? Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. What's he saying to us? You need anything? You know, we just got there talking about Christmas and all the hoopla that goes with it and asking children, what do you want? What do you need? Blah, blah, blah. You know, what is it that you really need from God today? What is it you need? My guess is we all could use a little more courage. We all could use a little more strength to be able to deal with the world that, that you and I face today. So, so that's what he says to Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Nobody ever said, if they did, they lied, <laughs> that the Christian life is an easy way of life. It is the best way of life. But Paul himself said, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It, it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be easy to do the right thing under every circumstance. It, it'll not always be easy to think the right thing under every circumstance. It'll not always be easy to, to control your mind under every circumstance. Those are some of the battles that we face every day as children of God. So we need strength, we need courage to deal with those things that come our way. God says to him, For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. What is that? Well, you think back to Second Peter chapter 1, and Peter talks about the exceeding great and precious promises of God. That's what this, there's one of them right here. God had promised to Abraham that you go into land that I'll show you, and I'll give it to you. I'll give it to your descendants. They'll inhabit the land. That's what God is reminding them of right here. The land which I swear unto their fathers, that goes back a ways, God is going to give them exactly what He promised to give them. God, according to the writer of Hebrews chapter 6, cannot lie. And I don't know that I've actually ever heard anybody accuse God of lying, but be foolish to do so. God has never lied. And whenever God makes those promises to us, just like He did to their fathers, He will fulfill those promises to us. That ought to give us the strength and the courage to do whatever He expects us to do in this life. Look at verse 7. Only be thou strong 
and very courageous. God has never promised to bless a coward. He's never promised to bless a coward. You remember the army of Gideon? How many people did Gideon take into battle with him as compared to the number that were available? A very small percentage. And out of some 30,000 people, the very first thing that God said was, those that are fearful, going back home. There's no place for you here. There's no place for the fearful in the army of the Lord. And there's no blessing from God when we become cowards and we're afraid to do what, what God has asked us to do. So again, what better place to start this year than on our knees asking God, begging God, give me the strength, give me the courage to be a faithful child of yours this year. I, I don't know of a better place to begin than that. That's where he begins with Joshua. Only be thou strong and very courageous. In Second Peter chapter 1, we mentioned a moment ago the exceeding great and precious promises. Later on, beginning in verse 5, he mentions those of what we call the Christian graces. One of them was virtue. Add to your faith virtue. Faith is the very foundation. He didn't say add faith. Faith is the beginning point. Add to your faith virtue. What is virtue? Simply define moral courage. If we have faith in God and a desire to do God's will, what is the very next thing we need to add? Moral courage to do what God wants us to do. Be courageous. For what reason? That thou mayest observe to do according to most of the law? No, no. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. God has never promised to bless those who just pick and choose what parts of His law they want to observe. And you and I in our lives on a daily basis need to think about that. Am I committed to my God and His will regardless, regardless of what it is. That's total commitment. That's what God is interested in, to love Him with all of thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and to love Him is to keep His commandments. So that's the message that He gives to, to Joshua in this regard, to observe to do all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. You want to have a good year? You want to prosper? Not promising material prosperity, but we can prosper spiritually to the degree that we're willing to heed the advice that God gave to Joshua that's just as applicable in an in application of it as it is to us. Where are you in your spiritual life today? Joshua had obviously prepared himself to be a leader or God would never have chosen him. In order for you to be that faithful servant of God, there's some preparation that needs to be made. The first thing is to become a child of God. And so this morning, if you're not a child of God, that's that's where you need to begin. Allow that faith in Jesus Christ to, to cause you to turn away from sin. Confess that faith. Be buried with your Lord in baptism. Get on the right way. Get in the right army, if you please. If you're not in the Lord's army, you're in the devil's, incidentally. Get in the right army. And then prepare yourself for the battle. Battles that you will face in life. But God has promised. If we'll be strong of good courage, do what He's asked us to do, He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. He will not fail us. Do you have God on your side today? 
if not, then why don't you make that change while you have the time and opportunity? So we stand together, sing a song of invitation. Come to Jesus, he will save you. Save as crimson and glow, if you give your heart to Jesus, he will make it white as snow. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come today. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come, come today. Come to Jesus, do not tarry. Enter in at mercy's gate. Who delay not till the morrow, lest thy coming be too late. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come, come to thee. Come to Jesus, dying a sinner, other Savior there is none. He will share with you his glory. When your pilgrimage is done, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come today, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Closing song this morning will be number 61. 61. If you have filled out an attendance card, please pass it to the center aisle to be picked up as we sing this final song. We remind you of our evening worship at 6 p.m. We will have pew packers at 540. And please remember the lads, the leaders, and leaderettes informational meeting that will take place at 5 o'clock here in the auditorium. 61. Then we'll be led in closing prayer. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with thee, peace, be still In all of life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry skies. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall live with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Most gracious, kind, heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Father, for this day and each day you give us. We're thankful, Father, for each one here this morning and for those, Father, that are not feeling well. We pray that you restore their health to them so that they may be back. We're thankful, Father, for the visitors we have here this morning. We pray as they return home, you will give them a safe journey home. We ask you, Father, that you forgive us when we sin and help us, Father, as this new year comes to be 
better and stronger for you. We pray that you be with us each day, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.